Gorgaka. So it's the 6th of November 2022. <clears throat> so this time now is the time for us to train our minds and train in this quality of sati, <clears throat> of mindfulness or recollection. So in order for this to be samma sati, this right mindfulness, we need to have right recollection, be recollecting the right things. Because actually our minds are always recollecting something, but normally they're recollecting things that are the basis uh, for lust or for delight, or recollecting things that give rise to a sense of aversion. And so these are the two deviant paths. It's Kama Sukhalikana Yoga and Atta Kilamatana Yoga. So the paths of uh, indulging in sensuality and the path of self-mortification, these two extremes. And neither are paths of peace. So we need to develop and increase this right view and this quality of wisdom. Knowing dukkha, this discontent or suffering, its cause, its cessation, the path leading to that cessation. And so we get there by developing mindfulness, this path of sila, samadhi and panya, of virtue, collectedness, and wisdom, and we walk this way, this noble path. So we can see that in this world there are many different kinds of paths, and all of us have traveled along many paths throughout our lives. And these paths, for the most part, are very easy to travel along, and sometimes we can do so with great speed. There are many different kinds of them. But the path to meet with genuine happiness, the Buddha was the first person to have discovered that path. And before his awakening, uh, he contemplated into dependent origination, contemplated into emptiness, and saw how all physical and mental things are stressful, They're inconstant and they're not self. They're empty. So all 84,000 sections of the Dhamma, or teachings of the Buddha, if we're going to gather all of these together, it's that form and feeling, perception, mental formation, sense consciousness, are changing or inconstant. These are things that can't endure, and they're not a self. And this is the very heart of the teaching of the Buddha. And for those who understand and see this heart of the Buddha's teachings, they see the Dhamma. And they've practiced the level where they know the Dhamma. So they've seen how physical and mental things are anicca, dukkha, anatta, And as this knowledge develops, and our practice develops in stages, it goes from the path of Sotapanna, so the fruit of Sotapanna, the path and fruit of Sakadakami, of Anagami, of Arahant. So we train our minds to grow in this quality of right view, this quality of wisdom. And we do that through walking this path, walking this magga. So when we have this quality of wisdom, then we'll be set on this training, on this practice, able to see the suffering that arises within our hearts, even though it may just be a small amount. We ask ourselves, why has this suffering arisen? And why can't I seem to do anything about it? What is the suffering? How does it come about? And where does it come from? So we probably know already that when there is this 
of sense of self, then the suffering will come up. It comes up because of me, because I don't like something, or because I am separated from things that I do like. So whenever there is a self, then suffering will be present. And when that self is absent, then there can't be any suffering that arises. So the Buddha taught about a dependent co-arising, and how with the presence of this, then there's the presence of that. And through his awakening into this, his heart became pure. And so he taught us this uh, teaching of anatta. But normally when we see things, I see a form, then we see it as a self, as me, as mine, as material things. But when samadhi arises within the heart, then we see that on a subtle, more subtle level. When our eyes see something, then there isn't that proliferation. And if we have wisdom, then we'll see that that form is merely form. So when we say this, we use this phrase, it's merely form. And what that means is that it doesn't actually have a name doesn't actually have a color, doesn't actually have a size. And if uh, that starts to deteriorate and break apart, or if the elements separate out, then we'll perceive anatta right there. And so they say that it's this coagulation, or this gathering together of things as a heap that obstructs our view of anatta. It's our changing of our posture that obscures um, the dukkha, the suffering. And it's the continuity that obscures our view of anicca, of impermanence, or change. And so we don't perceive that. So with these bodies, if we sit for long periods, or stand, or walk, or even lie down for long periods, then there'll be pain that arises, because we're not changing our posture. So when we have a feeling that there is a self there, that's because of this coagulation, because many of these things have come together as a heap. So we can see that in this Obosata hall that we're sitting in. And if we contemplate this, or anything that humans have given rise to, any buildings, skyscrapers, houses, even the highest or the largest buildings in the world, what are they made out of? What do they arise from? Well, they're constructed from bricks and rocks and sand and wood and metal. And there's also the water element as well. And if we separate all those out, then there's no building there. There's emptiness. So therefore form is equal to emptiness. So this form is emptiness. In its reality, form isn't there. So this emptiness is form, uh, because form is emptiness, so therefore emptiness must be form. And that, you know, it's not actually there. And so there isn't kind of a self there within that form. But if our minds aren't at peace, then we won't see that we will see them as actually being a self. And our insight then, or our view, or our perception, is a perception that follows conventions. But if we view in terms of vimuti, in terms of liberation, then we see emptiness. But when the heart has the defilements holding sway or dominance over it, and then we'll be deluded by these conventions. 
And once we're deluded by conventions, then a being, an individual, a me, or you arises. The cause for suffering appears. So the reason that we're training our minds right now is so that knowledge arises within them. So like knowledge into this self, that we feel that there's a self within our hands. So we can try touching our left hand with our right hand and feeling the bones there underneath the skin. But really, the bones within our hands and the bones of other people and the bones of animals, they're not different, they're the same. And when they deteriorate, they break apart, then they're not there anymore, they're anatta. So this training of our minds is something that's very important. It gives rise to knowledge and understanding in the truth. And once that happens, the suffering we experience reduces. For people who have sattā, have this conviction, faith and belief, they have a lot of merit. They have this merit to have met with the teachings of the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, and also to really set their hearts on practicing these teachings to the utmost of their energy. You see that with all the wealth that there is in the world, so there's also this noble wealth as well, this treasure of generosity, of virtue and of wisdom. But with sila, this virtue, something that we need to understand as well, that the purpose of sila is for peace. So, silena sukhatingyanti, silena bhogasampada, silena nibhutingyanti. That sila is for peace of heart. So, like practitioners or monks, for the monks, we need to keep the vinaya, the monastic discipline. And one of the rules in that is to not drink human blood. And if a monk does that, then they commit a tulachaya offense or a grave offense. And so this rule can give rise to fear in monks, uh, especially those who have um, illnesses, uh, which means that their gums can bleed. And so they may always be spitting out that blood because they're afraid that if they swallow it, and then they will fall in, into an offense. But this is <coughs> keeping the vinaya without wisdom. We need to understand that the purpose of that is for peace. And once we've understood that already, uh, we see that um, and if, if we're ill in that way, and then we swallow the blood, well, we're not harming anyone, we're not harming ourselves, we're not harming anyone else. And it doesn't cause anyone to feel afraid of us. And so it's not an offense, because we don't have any intention there. So the purpose of sila is to give rise to peace of mind and to not create chaos or confusion. But in the beginning, we may not have this kind of wisdom, and so a practice of sila can uh, make things turbulent. But when we gain this understanding, then we can put these things down and our minds can enter into peace. And this helps for samadhi to arise, because there's nothing there which is disturbing our hearts. And when this samadhi is well established already, and sati, as mindfulness, is uh, working together with the heart, then we can gain an understanding into the true nature of the Dhamma. You can see all material things arise and cease. And this jnana, this knowledge, can arise. 
and seeing all things like this arise and cease, we can gain this deep understanding that this is how it really is. So we may have heard this uh, before about perceiving sankharas, these fabrications come and go, seeing form arise and cease, but we may not actually see that for ourselves. But when this knowledge arises, then we gain an inner understanding of that. And we actually see for ourselves these teachings of the perfectly self-awakened Buddha. And this gives rise to great faith in the practice, that that faith becomes full in its energy. And then we really set ourselves on this practice in order to truly know the Dhamma. So when our minds have this energy uh, to them, then we can see that this body is just composed of elements. And we can see that with clarity. And there's no doubts left about that. Like we may have heard about Venerable Sivali, that when he was having his head shaved uh, to ordain, and then initially he became a Sotapanna. And so for practitioners, this can happen to them as well, that when they have this great energy to their samadhi, and they're contemplating into the body, then they can see just one part of the body, the hair of the head, hair of the body, the nails, the teeth, or the skin, for example, fall down. And then they gain this clear understanding uh, that brings up uh, this realization of stream entry. So may you be firm in the training of your mind. May you have a lot of mindfulness. And when you do so, when you're very mindful, then you're close to the Dhamma and close to the Buddha. And this will give rise to the inner nature of awakening, or this inner Buddha within the heart. And so may all of you set your hearts on this.